ay nagbibigay buhay. Sometimes literally like this, and oftentimes psychologically, mentally, spiritually. So you can test, how do you love? How do you love? True love gives life. True love is fruitful. And this is the title of chapter 5 of Amores Laetitia, which we shall begin now. Love always gives life. Each new life in the family is a reflection of the primacy of the love of God, who always takes the initiative, for children are loved even before having done anything to deserve it. Those who experience what it is to be pregnant, even before that baby comes out of your womb, you already love that baby. Even before you know the sex of that baby, or even if you, even before you knew that there's something wrong with the baby, you love that baby, like the child, like God, who loved us first. Dipuba, our loving God is a response, but it is God who loves us first. So, every child is a gift of God, and no child should ever be made to feel that he or she is a mistake, or worthless, or abandoned. Doon po sa mga nag-graduate kong estudyante, my students who graduated, the first graduation namin yun. We were talking about abortion because I was teaching fundamental morals and abortion just came up. So we discussed. And you know, one said, Miss, I was almost aborted by my parents. It's, I, was, I was just happy that my ninang was there to stop it. And then the other one also raised her hand. This one was a man, a young man. This one was a young woman. And she said, Ako rin po, kamuntik na rin ho ako i-abort. I was almost aborted by my father. It's a good thing. They changed their minds for one reason or the other. They were enlightened. And you know when they graduated, top two honors. They graduated at the top of their class. It's not so much for the intelligence as it is for the possibilities, right? If they were never given a chance to live, then they would not have had that opportunity to bloom. Sabi nga ni Father Jerry, yung gifts. No? And we need these gifts in order to contribute to the kingdom. In order to, now they're teachers already. They're both religion teachers. So, how can we issue solemn decl declarations on human rights and rights of children if we then punish children for the errors of adults? I had a student way, way back. And she, she also got pregnant. And student B, her classmate, was the one who told me this. He said, student, B, student A got pregnant and the parents I don't know where these parents come from. The parents were the ones who wanted her to abort the baby. Or else, out of the house. And so, nag-aaral pa ho siya. She was only in college, a third year college, second year college. And she had to think, pray, rethink, discern. In the end, student B told me she already made her decision, student A. And what is it? She will keep the baby even if it means her parents will get her out of the, I mean, will tell her to get out of the house. You know, student B's family were, was more a family to her because they adopted student A. Till she gave birth, they allowed her to go and work during the day and study in the evening she, that she finished. Yan ang life-giving, di po ba? Hindi mo ano ano You gave, and then after that, so she, she really bloomed, and the baby also bloomed. And then afterwards, the, the lolo and the lola, of student, the, the parents of student A, said, Ay, we want to see our apo now. Meron palang ganon, di ba? There are people like that. And they call themselves Catholic. Sometimes we say things so fast, the action is the very opposite of what we profess. Kaya ho yan, dukat na yan, dapat yan, sa atin din, hindi na sa bata. Because many times, our young people do not want to commit themselves in marriage because of the examples of adults. 
kami dalawa ni Nelson, we had a chance to go to the States 2011 after NJ died, the one who got run over. We went to her, his cousin, and the cousin's name was Juliet, married to an American. To this year, they will be 50 years married. No? That time, the children, um, she, Juliet told us about the story when Junil, their eldest, was still very young. The classmate of Junil went to her, to him, and said, Junil, don't you get bored going home to the same set of parents every day? Now we laugh. But what is the implication of that? Because they have divorced there. They can separate any which time and then find a divorce, right? And then, so today, Mr. Mr. Cott is your father. Five, six years after, Mr. Stevenson. Then so many years after, Mr. Hopper. It, it became a culture na nagpapalit ang kanilang mga sa tatay. Culture na. Such that it becomes boring to be committed to the same person. So you are very important. The parents and you are very important when you teach. Di po ba? Don't you get bored? Going to the same set of parents every day. Di ko alam isasagot sa bata. This year, they will be 50 years men. Next please. Each woman shares in the mystery of creation, which is renewed with each birth. Each child has a place in God's heart from all eternity. I witnessed the giving birth of my daughter, July 24. Not in the hospital, but in a birthing home in Antipolo. Water birth. I don't know if you, that was the first time I saw water birth. Shit. Pool, warm water, and the licensed midwives that were saying, Sige na, umbilik ka na before the boys but but this is a, a fact of life right so she was given and she said ayoko na because she was really already feeling very very uh, pain it was painful and then I told her and I had it had to be tough love and I said Michelle pag hindi ka umiring mabuti ngayon your baby's head is already there at the at the entrance of cervix if you don't if you don't do it well that baby can be killed because pag nag-iri siya, ang nandito yung pag-iri niya, and she stops, the baby will die. So I was holding her, and then the husband was there also, and and Alan, instead of instead of just holding her, nag-alis na ng pantalon, nakabrief na siya, pumasok sa pool, in order to support the wife. Come back, and then with the legs. That was so beautiful. And I saw how the baby came out of her. Tuloy, nakalimutan kong pindutin yung video. <laughs> sabi ni, sabi ni Alan, sa, Alan, sabi niya, Mama, pinindot di ba? Hindi, nakalimutan ko. I was so fascinated by the baby coming out and really life coming out. We women are so much partners to the Lord as co-creators. Of course, the man has something to do with that and not negating your role there. But in the actual thing, Okay, a child is a human being with immense worth. Each one is unique and irreplaceable. When our two sons died, somebody who went to the wake said, Di ba, Le, may tatlo ka pa namang anak. Saan ka ano yung tuta? <laughs> huh? Di ba? Each one of them is a human being, a person unique unto himself, unto herself. Even if you lose, if, even if you have still three, the two who died are unique individuals. No replacement. Irreplaceable. Sabi ko, hindi mo alam kita sinasabi mo. You do not know what it is to lose two children. Two sons. We love our children because they are children, not because they are beautiful or look or think as we do or embody our dreams. Hindi ako nakapag-engineer. Ayong anak ko niya mag-engineer. That's unfair. We love them because they are children. A child is a child. And not even because of the beauty. That's why the value of the person doesn't rest in externals. The value of the person rests in her dignity, his dignity, as the child of God. As the image of God. Father and mother show their children the paternal and maternal face of the Lord. Together, father and mother, they teach reciprocity, respect of differences, 
give and take. Together, man and woman are the image and likeness of God. The weakening of material presence. Meron hong mga, it's a, an extreme feminism now, na, which says, ah, motherhood is a hindrance to my career. So I don't want to get pregnant because I will lose my figure, I will lose my job. That is the extreme feminism that the Pope is against. He is all for respecting the woman in her feminine qualities, but not that extreme feminism where she says motherhood is a hindrance. Because mothers are the strongest antidote to the spread of self-centered individualism. Motherhood expands the heart. It makes you love beyond what you think you can do. Sabi, tama, tama yung sinasabi natin sa ating Pilipino, kaka, isusubo mo na lang, ibibigay mo pa sa anak mo, di ba? Totoo ho yun. Tingnan nyo sila, 11 sila. A mother who watches over a child with tenderness and compassion helps him to grow in confidence and to experience that the world is a good and welcoming place. Next, please. Fathers. Papa. After this, the, the, we will go into the intervention that we shared. A father helps the child to perceive the limits of life, to be open to the challenges of the wider world, and to see the need for hard work and strenuous effort. Isa po sa pinamanan namin sa anak namin na yung makita nila yung sacrifice nga, yung hard work. At that time, we were living in Kanlubang and up to now, I was working in uh, Procter and Gamble. I had to go all the way to Tondo. Doon yung ang planta namin, doon sa Velasquez, Tondo. Okay. Si Cory naman, every day, she has to rush to the bus terminal uh, papasok sa Assumption, Makati. Every day, yun yung grind namin. At nakita ito ng mga anak namin the need for hard work and strenuous effort. Okay? And then a father possessed of a clear and serene masculine identity who demonstrates affection for his wife is just as necessary as a caring mother. Alam po ninyo ngayon, ang mga tatay, hindi naman lahat, ano? Unti-unti nang nawawala, especially during the times na kailangan sagutin nila itong pinakamahalagang tanong sa buhay ng isang tatay. Yung tanong na parang sine, nasan ka nung kailangan kita? Alam po ninyo, lima yung anak namin, four of them, I accompanied Cory every time she gives birth. Except dun sa youngest, kasi nga that time, uh, na-injured yung leg ko, I was uh, nakakast ako. Kaya hindi ko siya nasaman. Pero yung apat na anak namin, I was with Cory. Okay. Ngayon, kinukwento nga nung isang paring kaibigan namin, may isang anak daw, may dalang tuta, sabi nung, nung bata sa pare, Father, I'll bring this dog to the dog hospital pa-ultrasound ko. Kasi pregnant. I will be accompanied by my father na mas excited pa sa akin para malaman kung ano yung magiging anak nitong tuta namin. Nung marinig daw nung asawa, nung mother, tignan mo yung tatay mo niya. Nung ako'y uh, pregnant ni Minsan, di ako sinamaan magpa-ultrasound. Pero itong aso, mas excited pa siya. Okay? In Western culture, the father figure is said to be symbolically absent, missing, vanished. Ito po yung malaking challenge sa pamilya ngayon. Unti-unti, wala ng time ang family, especially fathers. Kaya si Pope Francis is telling us, ibalik natin yung culture of encounter. Sino dito ang nahabutan pa yung nung malilit sila? kumakain sabay-sabay. Okay? Yan. During dinner, especially di ba? Andiyan si tatay, si nana, yung mga anak, nag-uusap. Anong nangyari, anak, ngayong araw? Okay? Ngayon, 
Pumasok ka sa isang bahay, kanya-kanyang TV, para tawagin ng nanay kumain, itetext pa isa-isa yung mga anak para bumaba. The culture of encounter, sabi ni Pope Francis. Kasi nga, unti-unting nawawala. Especially fathers. And even mothers nga, dahil nga ngayon, bibihira na ang mga nanay. Dati, mga nanay na iiwan sa bahay to take care of the children. Pero ngayon, unti-unti, nawawala. Okay? God sets the father in the family so he can be close to his wife and share everything, joy, sorrow, hope, and hardship. Okay? Alam po ninyo, in our 41 years of married life, we have always been close to one another. Way back many years, I had an offer to work in the States. I turned it down kasi sabi ko, uh, hindi ko matitis na mawala ko away from my from my wife and my children especially they were growing up so we can be close to his children as they grow up when they play and work hanggang ngayon no isang palagi namin ginagawa ng mga anak namin naglalaro sinasamahan ko sila ng basketball baseball football at kahit hindi ako teke minsan sumasama ko sa kanila Kaya lang, hindi ko na magawa yung ginagawa nila ngayon. Yung maglaro ng po, ano ba yung Pokemon Go? <laughs> Grabe ngayon ang mga, ang mga bata, pati matatanda, no? One time yung kaibigan namin, kinukwento niya, gabing-gabi na may kumakatok sa bahay nila. May dadala ng cellphone, nakaganon daw. Pwede ko bang pumasok? Sabi raw nung, nung may bahay. Bakit o oh, bakit? May uliin lang ako si Pikachu dito sa bahay nyo. <laughs> okay? When they are daring and when they are afraid, when they stray and when they get back on the right path, to be a father who is always present. Okay? The ministry of loving presence ng mga fathers, ano? especially fathers. Napakalaga ho yun. Kaya nga ho, nung pumunta kami sa Nung pumunta kami sa Sinod, we were so fortunate that we were given three minutes to deliver our intervention. Uh, ito po yung pinakamahalagang three minutes sa buhay namin kasi doon sa harapan ni Pope Francis at nung mga maraming bishops, cardinals, we were able to deliver our intervention, the Ministry of Loving Presence. Alam po ninyo, after the intervention, naglapitan yung mga obispo, sabi sa akin, you know, when you were delivering your intervention, we bishops were talking to one another, sabi namin, this is what the church needs nowadays. The Ministry of Loving Presence. And the Bishop of Guyana, I remember very well, he told me, my mother, my own mother, when my elder brother died, I was about 10 years old, he said, my mother told me, people will never realize or understand the pain of a mother when she loses a child. And so today, Ito po yung malit na contribution namin sa sinod, yung aming 3-minute intervention. Your Holiness, Eminences, Excellencies, Brothers and Sisters. We are Nelson and Cory Villafania, retired educators from the Philippines, but now more involved in evangelization through values formation seminars retreat giving and education of poor youth to become catechists and religion teachers. We have been married for 40 years, gifted with five children, two of whom have passed on to the Lord. We have constantly tried to root our marriage and family life 
on the Word of God, the Eucharist, and family prayer. And we saw the fruits of this daily striving when we lost our eldest son to kidney failure in 2004 and our fourth child to a vehicular accident in 2011. Up till the time of his death, JB, our eldest son, a special child, showed a genuine love for the Eucharist so that even as his body weakened in pain, he chose to participate in it rather than go home and rest. His favorite t-shirt had the words, God is good all the time. Seven years later, our other son, NJ, Nelson Joseph, was run over by a jeepney driver who was playing with his cell phone while driving. During our son's wake, we discovered reflection papers written when he was in third year high school in Don Bosco and first year college in USD, where he said, what is best, however, is that we nurture our relationship with God daily so that we may really learn how to love Him and not to fear Him as a slave would fear his master. This, I have discovered, is the beginning of eternal life. I belong to God and I am going back to God. The death of our two sons made the resurrection of our Lord more real because their stories gave life to our seminar workshops and retreats. They became, so to speak, our co-facilitators. We grieve their leaving us, but the way the faith has shaped them and us made it easier for us to let them go and place them in the hands of God where they will be happiest. Our greatest proof of the reality of the resurrection was the time when the driver who killed NJ asked for forgiveness and we, by the grace of God, forgave him. We realize now that we were helped in our grieving by much personal and family prayer and not so much by what people said to us or did for us, but by their just being there for us. It was their loving presence that gave us hope. Our priest friends just came one after the other to celebrate the Eucharist and our sister friends prayed with us. Two busloads of friends and co-workers came. A good number texted us their condolences, two of whom were Cardinal Tagle and Bishop Bakani. More than many words, we feel that we and many of our marginalized countrymen and women who cannot even afford to buy a coffin for their dead need from the Church the Ministry of Loving Presence. We thank the Holy Father for having modeled this when he visited the victims of Typhoon Yolanda in Tacloban. His presence in the name of the Lord was a source of new life for them and for all of us. Our deepest gratitude, Your Holiness. After 40 years of marital love, we can only thank God for being merciful and faithful to us. And we can only say, for all that has been, thank you. For all that is yet to come, yes, thank you. We will not uh, show that film anymore because I think Baka Archbishop Valles might be here already. Uh, so, yan ho kami. That is what we have experienced, that is what we have, we are struggling to do, which is to become a family that loves like Jesus loves. No? Struggling every day. Not quite 100% perfect, but trying every day. So thank you very much for your courtesy. Thank you, Nelson, and uh, Corey for the sharing.